before we get into that, I just quickly want to go over a bit about like who I am and why I do exactly what I do. So um, for me growing up, I had um, depression and low self-esteem. Uh, my parents split when I was about six or seven. Um, at school, I was really, I was good at school work, but I was disruptive in class. Um, and it sort of, I was always, you know, frustrated and angry that I couldn't, um, you know, express myself how I wanted to in class. So I would be, I'd muck around, I'd play up and all that kind of stuff. Um, that went into high school. Um, I was, again, I was good at sport, I was good at um, book type stuff, but socially, I wasn't good. So I, that's when I started to get social anxiety. Um, always feeling really shy, really awkward, not knowing what to say, how to act, um, and the depression and low self-esteem was still there. Uh, I went to uni, uh, did exercise science at Wollongong Uni, opened up a gym in Helensburg, had no clue how to run a gym, um, didn't have the business skills, didn't have the emotional intelligence to be able to motivate myself, um, burnt out, um, depression got worse, um, you know, I thought that you know, we, we're told you go to school, you go to uni, and then, you know, your life is going to be awesome. But I was still living at home with mum. I was driving a shitty car. I was working massive hours doing personal training, 5 a.m. till 9 o'clock at night, five, six nights a week. Didn't have much of a social life. The first year of business, I stuffed up my um, tax. I didn't know. I thought you go and see your accountant at the end of the year, and he gives you money. And he goes, oh, have you been putting your GST in Basel out? I'm like, what's that? He goes, oh, anyway. You owe me seven or eight grand. So the whole second year of business was was paying back business. So that just that just drained me because everything that I earned, I was paying off the debt. Um, depression got worse. Self esteem was still where it was. Um, and then yeah, it was the only thing I, I, that I would look forward to was going out on the weekends and taking drugs. I'd go out and party from you know Monday to uh, Friday night till Monday, Tuesday sometimes, and you can do it for a little while, but eventually it catches up with you, and then and then you you burn out. Um, I ended up losing that gym, I lost, lost a lot. Um, the party scene quickly escalated into you know, festivals, nightclubs, and then the, then the drug world. So then I was tied into that for a while. Um, pretty, pretty scary place to be. Um, I ended up having to leave the country. I lived in the Philippines for a year. Um, I started having panic attacks over there. Third world country, they'll just leave you to die in the gutter. Like they don't, there's no running water that you can drink from a tap. I didn't have, sometimes I didn't have phone credit, I was eating two minute noodles, I was just a mess. I was like, how, how did I get to that point? Like life was going so good and here I am and stuck in this country. And anyway, I had to do the, the call home. <laughs> Mum, can you come get us? And my brother come over and they're just like, what the fuck are you doing? What have you done to yourself? You just, yeah. So I ended up having to come home and I having panic attacks on the plane and panic attacks in front of customs, coming through the, um, the gates in Sydney, it was just horrible. Um, then I went to see more psychologists and counsellors and psychiatrists to try and fix the anxiety and panic attacks and none of it really worked. Like it was good when you're there talking to them but as soon as you leave and you go out into the real world nothing really changed. Um, and then my past caught up with me, I had to go down to Melbourne to hand myself in over at something that I'd been charged for um, a few months earlier. And then when I got there, they arrested me um, for drugs charges and um, my mum flew down there with me and I thought we'll just go in there to get my bail thing stamped and set a new court date. And then, yeah, they'll wait there waiting for me and I got arrested and then I did 18 months jail down there. Um, and that's just a shit hole. You don't want to ever go there. And it just scares the shit out of you. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not like the movies. Like, I mean, if you go in there looking for trouble, you'll find it. But if you go in there and you're, you know, you're respectful and you, you keep to yourself and all that kind of stuff, then you'll, you know, like this, three, four hours a day, just about life and about emotions and the mind and all that kind of stuff. And she just started filling me, filling my mind with this information. And I, and I didn't judge it. There was times I wanted to disagree and argue. And I go, no, nah, I'm just going to, I don't know. If I, if I understood my mind and how it works, I wouldn't have ended up where I ended up. So... Yeah, I listened and took it in and then she gave me some books to read, um, A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and a few other books like that. And I'm like, these books, it keeps talking about this ego and pain body. And I said, I reckon I know how to, to switch that off or, or release it or at least reduce the size of it. And she goes, how? And I said, well, I went to see this holistic doctor years ago for my depression. Um, and he had this process that, you know, gets rid of your depression. She goes, can you remember it? And I go, well, I'll give it a try. And somehow I, I remembered it. Um, and it comes from a very spiritual place, very spiritually worded, big 
big long words and some of the words will scare the shit out of you if you can pronounce them properly. So I just made it, I just made it, you know, practical and relatable to me. Like how, how can I use it and how can I make it work? And then I started using it and then she goes, well, show, can you show me how it works? And so you can imagine in a, in a prison, you're in a room and um, instead of the walls, there's all windows so that they can see in and out. And so I'm running her through the technique that we're going to do today. And she did it with her eyes open. So in, with her third eye and her imagination spot. And I took her through the steps and it released. And she just goes, Scotty, wow. She had faced it up. She goes, that, the emotion that we released, she, might, she would have, she goes, I've had that for at least 45 years. Carried that around her whole, and she'd done everything. She'd done all, everything, pers um, personal development. She'd been to Buddhist, you know, Buddhist things, retreats. For Pashnas, you name it, she'd done the whole lot. And this thing released it. She was just, she was amazed. And she goes, you know what this means, don't you? And I went, yep. So I spent the next nine months of my sentence literally going over my whole life, doing what we're doing today, and just releasing everything. It was like I had a stockpile of memories, and I just was just releasing the emotion that attaches to the memory one by one. And I got to a point where I was lying in my cell one night, staring up at the ceiling, and got all my all green clothes on, and my white Dunlop volleys. And I thought, far out, this is the first time that I actually feel happy, confident, and relaxed since I was like five years old. I thought, maybe we've got this whole world backwards. Maybe, because I had nothing, you know? I had, my family was all up in Sydney. I was down in Melbourne. You know, I had the books in my room, a little TV. The bloody toilet was in the same room I was sleeping in. You know, I had every reason to be upset about it. But yet I'd found happiness. I'd found confidence and I'd found my inner peace. And ever since I've realized that, I've been on a mission to sort of, I'm the kind of person when I experience it and I believe in it, then the whole world has to know about it. So that's what brings me here today. And ever since I've been released, you know, I've been, I'm still working through stuff. Like there's still stuff that pops up for me every day that I'm, that I'm working on. So I'm not like, you know, one person, I just don't feel negative emotions. I do. It's just that I'm good at releasing that I'm good at learning the lessons and I'm good at, you know, making a strategy so that it doesn't happen again, you know, and get myself to that next level. So that's why I'm here and thanks for coming.